Hello everybody and welcome to the third week of the Operations Research One course. This week we are going to start with modeling the production process problem into linear programming problem. And then in the next videos we are going to look at uh, multi-period problems which we can also model into linear programming problems. So let's start. So in the production process you have usually several stages of processes. So from raw material becomes A and then becomes B and then finally becomes C, the final product. So those are the stages of the production process. And then the key here in uh, formulating that process is that you need to be able to determine the relation between the output from one stage to the output to the uh, other stage. So how those stages are related, that is the key in formulating the production process. Okay, so now let's take a look at an example. Ryland Corporation manufactures perfumes and they have two types of perfumes. They're called Brut and Chanel. Those perfumes come from raw material. So you have the raw material and then you process the raw material. You will get what they call as regular perfumes. So regular Brut and regular Chanel. So these regular perfumes, they, they come from processing raw material. And then from these regular perfumes, you have the option to produce a luxury perfume by doing a further processing. So if you process the regular perfume further, which takes some money and then some laboratory time, you will get a perfume which is called luxury perfumes. So from regular brute, you will get luxury brute if you process the regular further. And then from the regular Chanel, if you process it further, you will get a luxury Chanel. But again, as I told you before, to process uh, the regular perfume further, you will need additional hours of laboratory time and then processing cost. Okay. And then notice here where it says has the option. It means this is the decision variable because has the option means that you need to decide whether you do that or not do that. Okay, so if we keep reading, you will see that Ryland has 6,000 hours of laboratory time available and then can purchase up to 4,000 pounds of raw material. So you know this sentence is about the constraints because you only have this much time available. You can purchase up to that number of raw material. So clearly this is about the constraints. And then finally, the objective of this problem is that um, Ryland Corporation wants to maximize the profits. Okay, so I will pause the video as usual and give you time to really read all the information in this problem. I will continue the discussion after the pause of the video. Okay, so first let's try to define the decision variables. To do that, sometimes I try to get the ideas from the objectives. The objective here says that we need to maximize the profit, which means that we need to collect all the information, all the variables that are related to money. For example, for each pound of raw material, you need to pay $3. So obviously this is related to the profit. So raw material must be a decision variable, right? Because you need to decide how much raw material you want to buy. Okay, so then we also have the prices for the regular perfumes that we sell. We have the prices for luxury perfumes that we sell. And then we have the processing cost to convert from the regular perfume to the luxury perfumes. So these are all the information that must be related to the decision variables. So let's say we name the amount of raw material, how many pounds we purchase as X5. 
and then we also decide how how many ounces of regular brute that we're going to sell and then we name it x1 and then how many ounces of regular chanel that we're going to sell we name it x3 this is your decision right so that's why it becomes decision variable and then we also decide how many ounces of luxury brute that we're going to sell at 18 dollar per ounce we name it x2 and then how many ounces of luxury chanel that we sell we name it x4 what about the processing cost well here you see that this four dollars of processing cost occurs when you convert one ounce of regular brute to become one ounce of luxury brute so you can say that for every single ounce of luxury brute that you have, you need to pay $4. Similarly, this $4 here occurs for every single ounce of luxury Chanel that you have. So whenever you have one ounce of luxury Chanel, it means that you need to pay $4 to make it happen, to change it from the regular one to the luxury one. So these are the definitions of our decision variables. X5 is the number of pounds of raw material that we purchase. And then X1 and X3, they are the number of ounces of the regular perfume that we sell. And then X2 and X4 are the number of, of ounces of luxury perfumes that we sell. For X2 and X4, if you want to be super precise in the definition, you can say X2 is the number of ounces of regular brute that is processed further and sold as luxury brute. Similarly, for X4, you can say if you want to be super precise, the number of ounces of regular Chanel that is processed further and finally sold as luxury Chanel. But because um, this conversion is one to one, which means that one ounce of regular becomes one ounce of luxury, you can also say that X2 and X4 equals the ounces of the luxury. Okay. Now using this uh, decision variables, you may define the profits that you want to maximize. So for X1 up to X4, these are the selling price. And then minus the processing cost that you need to process um, regular perfume to become luxury perfume. So minus $4 for X2 and X4. And then do not forget minus three times X5 because for every single pound of material that you purchase, you need to pay $3. And then this is the profit that we would like to maximize. So this is the objective function. Now let's talk about the constraints. We have 6,000 hours of laboratory time available. What kind of processes need this laboratory time? First, processing raw material, each pound of raw material requires one hour laboratory time. And then for every transformation from regular to luxury brute, we need three hours laboratory time. And then for the transformation from regular Chanel to luxury Chanel, we need two hours of laboratory time. Okay, so raw material, luxury brute, luxury Chanel, they are the types of processes that need laboratory time. So the constraint becomes like this. 1 times x5 because 1 hour for each pound of raw material. 
and then three hours for every ounce of luxury brood that we have and then two hours for every ounce of luxury chanel that we have in the end okay or you can also say two hours for every ounce of uh, regular chanel that you process further and finally sold as luxury chanel so remember the super precise definition that i was talking about in the previous slide okay so the sum of all this must not exceed six thousand hours and then we also have um, this uh, constraint here which says that we can produce sorry we can purchase up to four thousand pounds of raw material so that is the second constraint if we stop at this moment with two constraints and the objective function and the sign restrictions this formulation is still wrong because it is still incomplete there are at least two signs to say uh, or to see that this formulation is wrong the first sign is that you notice x1 and x3 they appear in the objective function but they do not appear at all in the constraints which means that if you want to maximize z you can just simply set x1 and x3 to become super large such that this problem becomes unbounded problem and that's why this formulation is still wrong the second sign is that we have not described the production process which means that um, we should be able to describe that if we have x5 pounds of raw materials we should be able to produce 3x5 ounces of brute and 4 ounces of Chanel. So this fact here has not been described in this formulation. That's why this formulation is still wrong or incomplete. Let's take a look at how to fix this in the next slide. So let's formulate the constraint for this relation. So if we have x5 pounds of raw material, then the total number of brutes that we have, which is x1 plus x2, must equal three times the raw material that we have, right? x1 is the number of ounce of regular brute. x2 is the number of ounces of regular brute that we process further such that we are selling it as luxury brood. The sum of the ounces of X1 and X2 must be three times the raw material that we have. Okay, so the three here, the unit is ounce of brood per pound raw material. So if we have one pound of raw material, it means that you can have the total of three ounces of regular brood and luxury brood same thing here if we have x5 pound of raw material you will have uh, the total number of chanel equals to four times the raw material that you have right because if you have let's say two pounds of raw material it means that you will have eight ounces of Chanel, both regular Chanel plus luxury Chanel. So after adding those two keys constraint to formulate the production process model, and then also the sign restrictions, we have got the complete formulation. So let me ask you a question to check your understanding. I say that this equation here is an alternative way to model the production process constraint. So to model this uh, figure here, you can use this equation. Is it true or false? I will give you the answer after the pause of the video. The answer is false. 
although from language wise it kind of makes sense that raw materials equals three ounces of brute that we have plus four ounces of chanel that we have right from from the words it kind of making sense but then if you check the units it does not make sense at all the left hand side has the unit of pound and then this tree as i've said before the unit is uh, this tree here means three ounces of brute per pound of raw material so the unit is ounce per pound but then x1 here the unit is ounce so if you multiply 3 times x1, the unit will become like ounces square per pound, which does not make sense at all. And it does not match with the left-hand side. Therefore, you know that this constraint is wrong.